we're going to talk about streams and how we've been working on making streams a little easier to use. So first of all, I'm Robert. Uh, I'm the co-founder of Next Edition and a collaborator on Node.js and Undici. And this is my friend. I'm Benji. Uh, I work on uh, stuff at Microsoft, a uh, bunch of stuff. I also work on Node.js and a bunch of other open source things. Uh, been working with, no with Robert on streams and a bunch of uh, other new things in uh, Node.js. Okay, so does anyone here in the crowd think they know streams like 10 out of 10? And if you say yes, I will quiz you. <laughs> Great. So we have like a room full of hundreds of developers. Uh, we have streams which are fundamental to like uh, how Node.js works and no one knows how to use them. By the way, I didn't raise my hand either. I don't know streams 10 out of 10, they're just that complicated. Uh, does anyone here work on servers or like uh, command line tools? Anyone? Yeah, so I, I, I'm seeing a lot of hands here. So these are common, uh, so you, you are using streams uh, and we gave you this like bad API that like no one knows how to use probably. Uh, does anyone here use arrays and like dot map on arrays, right? Th that's a pretty nice API. Like we like that API, correct? So uh, today we wanna go over like how we got to the messy point we are uh, and what we're doing to fix it, because it's, it's quite an interesting story. It's, it started in this conference last year. Uh, and, and what we'll do, we'll use like a pretty simple example of like getting a list of URLs, uh, then like making an API request uh, based on all those URLs, uh, and pretending we need like to limit concurrency, and then we aggregate them and store them in the database. That's something that should be simple in Node.js, it's fairly common, uh, and we're gonna compare how it used to look Obviously, no one throws up uh, to how it will look uh, soon. All right. Uh, there is a bunch of code in the background. I don't want to go for like a ton of streams code uh, of like how, how it looked. Uh, so we're just going to go uh, over like the simple stuff. All right. So we start with a little bit of history. Uh, the point here is not for everyone to understand the code examples. I just want to make a point that it's complicated. So back in the ancient times, we had ancient streams. And uh, we had like data listener and finish listener, and then you would just uh, write. And there's all of those dot, dot, dots require a lot of code to get it right. And there's a lot of edge cases. So I'm not sure even I know how to do it perfectly 10 out of 10. So in, to improve that situation, we got readable pipe which is also not perfect because you have to propagate the errors yourself and you have to do it properly. So that's still too complicated. And this is for the most basic example. Uh, if you have multiple transforms and those kind of things and uh, stream-like objects, it just won't work. So later we also got readable read, which made maybe reading easier, but uh, compositing streams is still dot, dot, dot. Uh, very complicated. Uh, then we added pipeline, which is a little bit of a helper method where you just pass in lots of streams and then pipeline figures out for you how to pipe and connect these streams in a correct way. Uh, that's kind of nice, but um, uh, it's still not optimal when it comes to composition. So what if I want to build a transform of different transforms? then you know, I kind of have to have an array of transforms, and then when I pass it to the pipeline, I have to uh, destructure it there, so I can't really do good composition. Uh, we later added stream compose, where you can now do composition. Uh, you just pass in two transforms, and you get back a new duplex uh, stream that you can then work on uh, in, for example, pipeline. So that's, that's pretty nice. Uh, then we got async iterator. And that made uh, you know, reading from a stream very easy. You just for await the stream and then um, uh, iterate over the chunks. But then you have to write it to the destination. And now we don't have any back pressure from the destination. So we could just uh, you know, fill up memory and crash our process. So we have to fix that. So we check that's right, and then if uh, the destination is full, we wait for the drain. Mm, it's pretty okay. But uh, 
If you're doing a retry loop, for example, you're only checking if you can write more after you've already written. So you can still you know, run out of memory depending on what kind of code you're writing. So we added a writable need drain, so you could check before you're writing. And then uh, uh, EE once uh, is very slow, so you need to do some kind of optimization, create a wait map method that is dot, dot, dot. Uh, you need to handle error on the destination. And then there's concurrency, there's composition, there's uh, legacy compatibility with old style streams. So it all becomes a mess. So no, not a good idea. Uh, how about we just put async generators into the pipeline? This is, again, pretty nice. Pipeline handles all the, you know, uh, piping together of things. And um, it's a reasonably good API. But let's say we want to have concurrency here, so we want, because this will just run everything in synchronous, uh, one at a time. Mm -hmm. So we will only run one transform async at a time. So we want to add some concurrency. Uh, and then things get complicated again. More dot, dot, dots. And now we're yielding promises that we then buffer in a pass-through. And then we await them in a generator afterwards. So no. All right, uh, so I, I hope like uh, Robert's examples showed how like uh, uh, convoluted it can get and like that the APIs are getting better, but it's still tremendously hard to author streams code in an obviously correct way. Uh, Node has like had streams with back pressure for a very long time, uh, since like 0 0.8 I think, and uh, it's like an API that people still don't like use correctly. Uh, usually, including myself, like it's it's pretty common uh, to get bugs when writing uh, complex code. Now, uh, as you know, we are like in the renaissance of JavaScript. Uh, the language is evolving pretty quickly, and one of the things that's missing is that arrays have like dot map, which is super useful and everyone likes. But iterators, generators, everything else that's like a collection, uh, while it's like it's fundamentally a functor, it's fundamentally something you can map. They, they don't implement like a dot map method. You have to use like uh, something uh, like from userland. So uh, as you saw, there's like async generators, uh, uh, which are like stuff you can for await. It's like a pretty simple protocol. It's something you can get the next value for. And the next value returns a promise uh, because it's async. So it's useful for any sort of like uh, um, async values uh, thing. Uh, every node stream is async iterable, which means like every node stream you can for await. So like a file stream is like here, or an HTTP stream, or like a JSON stream if you use like a library, or li literally any anything that's a stream. And you can do for await and fun stuff. But in regular synchronous code, we moved from doing like for loops to doing dot map and dot filter and nice stuff uh, because it's easier and more readable and maintainable and such. So what people actually want, uh, my hypothesis is, they just want to dot map a stream. They don't want to pipe a transform stream and implement complicated stuff. Uh, the iterator helper's proposal is a JavaScript language proposal, like a TC39 ECMAScript proposal, for adding all those methods to iterators and async iterators. Now, the language is not aware of node streams or web streams or like any, any other kind of streams, but because streams are async iterable, we can take this proposal and add to it. Now, the story is, and, and, and it does, it adds dot map and like dot index pairs and filters and, and, like, and like everything you would pretty much expect to, to be there. Uh, reduce and, 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 and such. Uh, I was waiting for a long time for someone to do this because I, I believe strongly that this is the API people actually want with async iterators. Like, when you see a talk about the library with like concurrency, like RxJS or, or the, like that sort of library, you will always see these examples of, hey, you can like dot map synchronous stuff. Now you can dot map asynchronous stuff. It's a very good selling point. Uh, the proposal, of course, can fail. Like it's stage two. It's, it's further than like uh, Gil's proposal, which I am like honestly more hopeful for. Uh, but it's uh, like proposals can like uh, rise and fall all the time. It's like a complicated language. Um, a lot of times in good faith, uh, stuff gets discovered, but I'm very optimistic this will make it. Uh, but Node, like regardless of the proposal making it or not, uh, Node can still like ship this API and give user uh, the thing they want. Uh, when iterator helpers were super new uh, in 2000, 
15, they were stage two themselves, uh, not the helpers, the async iterators themselves. I gave a talk about it, uh, saying this is the API we want. We want to dot map async iterators, which was very useful. Uh, last year, Robert was here, and he gave a talk about streams in, in this conference, in no TLV. And, and when he was here in OTLV, he gave a talk about like the new APIs and performance and like cool stuff about streams. And then like he went to the, there was like a small room at the end, it's like a speaking room. And I said, hey, don't users actually just want to dot map uh, uh, the stream? So I asked him and, he, and like we started talking about it. And in the conference, at the end of the day, we had a first pull request. And uh, like, Robert is one of the people who likes making big changes in Node.js core. There's stuff like we were afraid to change before he got here. And he was like, okay, let, let's make changes and like possibly break stuff. It's, it's, it's better to not stop progress, uh, which is really important. It's like, it takes a lot of courage, I, like honestly, uh, to, to be okay with like breaking this sort of stuff. Uh, so I knew he was the right person to talk to about this. It's, there's not many people like you can uh, push these changes to. So like we went, hey, let's add dot map to streams. Um, yeah, like check out this proposal. He looked in the proposal, and we had a pull request the same day. Uh, I opened the pull request. Here it says like uh, work in progress. When we we talked in OTLV, uh, it's based on like the ongoing standards work. This is like from last like last year's OTLV. It's we've seen November fifteenth, same date. Uh, obviously, the first thing uh, Robert did was rewrite my code uh, into something more like acceptable, uh, not using like a for loop. To support the stuff, and we got consensus. Like people were happy with the API. It took a while, but eventually it landed. Uh, I want to shout out and like thank the people. Uh, I know Nitsan is there somewhere. I saw him uh, who contributed like one of the methods, and then uh, other languages. Like a lot of people don't know what the relationship between JavaScript and other languages is. It's like mostly friendly. If like a language like C Sharp has an API, and like I'm adding something similar to it to Node, or like working on a proposal for JavaScript. I will talk to those people. Uh, they will more likely than not be willing to help. And in this case, uh, for when we added cancellation, uh, the C Sharp people were very helpful and gave us a lot of feedback, uh, which I, I enjoyed. Uh, we went ahead. We did the whole API. Everything that's like iterator helpers, Node has. Uh, I already thank Nitsan, who is here, uh, for like adding uh, dot .find. Uh, yeah, uh, later. Uh, and, uh, and basically, we added every extension uh, to the language, uh, which is great. So let's take like, really basic examples and like, go through how you can do them with streams. So you used to need to do this really weird thing to take something and convert it to like, a stream. So let's say you just had an array of one, two, three. You used to need to create like a, a class extending readable or doing like new readable with simplified construction and feeding it in the constructor and like pushing null and all that stuff. Uh, now you get readable from for a while and there's like a duplex from and writable from like there's there's writable from there's duplex from, uh, but there's like readable from you can very easily convert stuff like async generators or, or arrays or anything that's iterable or async iterable to a stream. And this is also useful if you have something that looks like a stream but isn't uh, entirely a stream. Uh, when you want to map stuff, you used to need to pipe a transform stream or, or pipeline it or compose. You can just dot map now. So if you have like a, a, a stream of bytes and you want to, uh, bytes is not a good example, but if you have like any stream of one type of object and you want another type of object, there is no need to like getting complicated libraries from NPM. Uh, you can just dot map it. Uh, yeah. If you want to do concurrency, uh, I don't even want to show like the, the solution for how you limit with native, and there is a solution with native Node.js core methods, uh, how you can limit the concurrency of a Node.js uh, stream. Uh, but if you have, for example, an API, you can hit at most like uh, three times at once, uh, you can do it. Robert will elaborate a bit later. Uh, iterating is very simple, like the dot data here, uh, you should prefer dot readable. I hope, for your sake, you're, you don't know why uh, you should prefer dot readable. And I, I think that's a problem with like Node's API. Uh, but today, you can either for wait, uh, which you could before, which is nice because you can break, or you can dot for each, like you can for array. So like the theme is anything you get for arrays, you can get, uh, you can get here. Uh, so going back to the example we started with, uh, which I think is pretty like common in like terms of what people do with Node.js. You get a list of URLs, 
Uh, you filter them out, uh, just the relevant ones, you hit an API, and you aggregate the results. It should be simple, it's fundamental to like something people do with Node. I am not even gonna show you, like we're not even gonna show you the way I uh, used to have to write this code before promises, because that's ancient, uh, but this used to be considerably more complicated and uh, require even more libraries. We're just gonna show you the native API. Uh, so this is like a before and after, you don't need to read this code, uh, we're going through the specifics. Uh, it's just to show you that this, the way, today it's significantly simpler and smaller than um, it used to be. So in both cases, uh, you would use fetch to get the URLs. Uh, if you use an old version of Node.js, uh, you can get a fetch library from uh, like Andici fetch uh, from NPM. But if you use modern Node 18, you just have global fetch available. You can use that. Fetch is built into Node. Uh, finally, um, it's it's so nice to say it. It took a while. Oh, it's him, not me. <laughs> Even Ethan and a bunch of people. Uh, so 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 that's great. Uh, so in both cases, you would just fetch. In terms of converting something to a readable, if it's not a readable, uh, you can use readable from. Uh, however, certain APIs like pipeline, you can just pass something and then they'll convert it for you. Uh, but readable from is, is a, the simple way to convert something to readable. So if you have like an API that works on streams, you have something that's not a stream, just like array.from, you got readable.from. Uh, similarly, uh, before that, uh, when we need to filter URLs, uh, we would use an if. And uh, this is similar to regular synchronous code when you convert it from uh, using dot map, dot, like regular for loops to using dot map dot filter. It's exactly the same point. So here we have like, we iterated explicitly with the 408, and then we have to check the URL includes something that's like a filter, and then we yield uh, a, like a map to something. So instead, we get dot filter, which is what we meant. It can be sync or async, like the filter can return a promise, the filter function. And then we dot flat map. And as you can see, the dot flat map uh, takes a signal. Robert will cover that more later. But you can just fetch in a flat map, and it will be exactly like array flat map. Uh, if anyone doesn't know, flat map is just like a dot map, and then flattens the result. Nothing, uh, no magic here, uh, kind of. So, which do, does anyone like this better than this? Yeah, you do. Ah, oh, that's fair. That's like I, I, I'm not a, I'm not judgmental. Uh, so, like we are, we are hoping the APIs are getting better. That like users are, are able to express uh, what they uh, what they actually mean. Limiting the concurrency to ten uh, used to require like allocating a new transform stream, limiting its high watermark. Who here thinks they understand like? or actually understands watermarks in Node well. Okay, great, that, that's, that's exactly the number of people, like he, he does, he does not raising his hand, but like there's like one person and like and a half maybe uh, that understand how the watermarks work well in Node. So you used to have to do this. I hope you never had to do this or like you could use a library from NPM like plimit. Uh, in the new API, you just do this, which I believe is significantly simpler. You can limit any stage uh, with uh, the concurrency and then finally, if you want 100 results out of it, uh, and just to aggregate them, uh, before you had this like, uh, uh, function that needs to aggregate it in a for loop, today you can just do array. So you can, but often shouldn't, convert any stream to, just a, to an array of stuff, just like you got readable.from that takes an array and returns a stream. You got two array on streams that takes a readable stream and returns an array. Uh, I want to give a caveat about it. Uh, be very careful when converting like a stream into an array because it takes the whole stream and dumps it into memory, uh, which is good, but also very costly in terms of performance. Uh, so before you had to do all this, now it's, it's very simple. You can drop and take and, and things are uh, much nicer. So that's the proposal. Uh, there are some more operators that you can use that we didn't go through. But, but uh, we have also looked at some extensions of the um, iterators proposal that we think are quite uh, important for using Node. And uh, that has to do with uh, concurrency and cancellation. Uh, I've modified a little bit uh, Benjamin's uh, example there to make it uh, easier. Uh, for this specific uh, topic. So basically what we're doing here, we're, we're grabbing a bunch of paths and we're doing a read on them and then passing them on to um, 
to do something. And this is how you would do it before. Now, uh, I, I'd like to point out a, a common mistake with streams here, uh, in, in, actually in generators in general. Uh, generators, people assume that you can just run your generator and then return and everything is fine. Uh, but generators don't cancel asynchronous operations that is running inside. So the, the only point a generator will be cancelled is when it reaches a yield. So if you have a bunch of await methods before the yield, they will have to be completed even if you return the uh, generator itself. So that's why, for example, in pipeline, all the generator functions take a second argument, which is an abort signal. Uh, and that signal you should uh, pass on to all your asynchronous uh, calls inside of the generator. But, um, so this is a simple example. Problem here is that we're just reading one file at a time. So it would be nice if we could read multiple files and ha have some parallelism in this example. Mm -hmm. So then we go back a little bit to what we've been talking about before. So you could uh, yield promises, uh, add a pass-through as a buffer, and then add another async generator and await the promises in there. Quite complicated. And uh, while I was reviewing this example uh, today, I noticed that I actually had bugs in it. <laughs> so this is quite difficult to get right. So uh, first of all, we're missing a catch on the promise here, because while that promise is buffered, there is no catch handler, which means that if it throws, you will have an unhandled rejection and your process will crash, I think, in node 17 plus, yes. or you get a warning. <laughs> so that's one problem. The other problem is high watermark pass through, which is a little weird, uh, is actually a readable and a writable stream together. So the high watermark applies to both sides. So you're actually buffering twice as much as you would think. So we have to divide the concurrency by two. So, and I'm not even sure if there are more problems here. <laughs> so getting this to work with streams, not simple. So how would we do this with uh, our proposal? So we have map, we do readable from paths, and then we map them and read, and the map can take an asynchronous method, so we return the promise and the map will take care of it. But we don't have concurrency here. So let's just pass in an options object and have some concurrency. This is not part of the uh, TC39 uh, spec, but we think it makes sense. Uh, this is similar to like merge map in RxJS. Um, and then we have the cancellation. So what happens if we all of a sudden have an exception from do something, or maybe we just return early? Then we have lots of concurrent pending reads that will finish. So you have no choice but to wait for those to finish, and then you just throw away the result. And then that's not nice. So map um, in uh, node will take a second uh, argument to the map function, which provides a signal. And that signal you should propagate to the async methods that you call. And that way, when you exit this for a loop, uh, for a wait loop early, then everything will be properly cancelled. Uh, the, the main problem with the abort signal is TC39 has no, no way to abort asynchronous operations. Abort signal is not part of uh, TC39, correct? Yeah, it's yes. part of what WG? Yeah, so uh, this is not something that I think we can even propose for TC39 to add, because it doesn't exist in the standard. We did, they didn't like it. Yeah, <laughs> we tried. <laughs> we tried. <laughs> but um, so until there is uh, some kind of abstraction for uh, cancellation, uh, this will probably be a node only or maybe server side only extension mm -hmm. for now. Right. Uh, so w w one thing that like, got up, uh, like got raised when we talked about this is. Does this deprecate libraries like RxJS? Like, if I'm using RxJS or anything that exposes .map, does this deprecate it? And we sort of disagree uh, amongst ourselves. So this, yeah. this is Ben who, who wrote RxJS uh, with his permission. So uh, you'll start with like why you think it uh, does. Yeah, we decided to fight it out live. Yeah. 
So I don't see any reason why we couldn't <laughs> implement all, most RxJS operators because uh, node streams are, are both push and pull. Uh, but I do see the problems that it needs a lot of effort, <laughs> which I don't know who is going to do. And uh, having the same performance as RxJS, I don't think is feasible. Yeah, and, and I think that like RxJS finally in the, like last month and maybe a month before is finally getting like fixes to its debuggability. It used to be very hard, in my opinion, to debug complicated RxJS code. It's finally getting fixed. Uh, async iterators like we we cheat because it's just like native async functions. It's already debuggable. Uh, but RxJS is fundamentally I know I know it's like not popular to say it's fundamentally simple. Like all the operators are complicated, but the abstraction itself. Is fundamentally simple. I'm sure there are still use cases where this is uh, simpler. And of course, RxJS exists in like web browsers for push streams, so it's not going everywhere. If you use RxJS, like don't rewrite your code. Uh, there is still room for it, in my opinion. Uh, all right, I think that's it, mostly. Oh, uh, what's coming? Uh, so, we're, we're, like a bunch of stuff is happening. Uh, there is a ton of uh, possible extensions and stuff we may do. Uh, compatibility between node streams and web streams. Those are the streams you get if you like fetch a node, for example. Uh, debuggability, observability. Uh, one main point I want to raise here is that a lot of this change, like what we work on, is driven by your feedback. This feature exists because of this conference last year. Uh, and a lot of, like, people are surprised that a lot of stuff in Node.js and web browsers is blocked on. Like developers taking the time and telling us, hey, this is a good idea, or hey, this is like a terrible idea, uh, don't do it. So if you want to influence Node uh, and like what APIs we do, uh, please just tell us. Like just your feedback of like, we like this, we don't like this, uh, is extremely valuable and helps drive our, like, drive our decisions. Uh, and if you want to contribute, of course, that's even better. Uh, anything else you want to? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think that's much. it. All right, so uh, uh, thank you very much.